yeah good morning uh, all my dear students in the previous class uh, we had a discussion uh, on the insects which are coming under the order hemiptera and we tried to learn the important characteristic features of the insects which are coming under order hemiptera and similarly we also had a discussion about the suborders like heteroptera and homoptera and what are all the differences between these heteroptera and homoptera and most importantly we understood we try to understand the heteropterans are bigger in size homopterans are smaller in size heteropterans will have a hemi elytra whereas the homoptera will have a uniform four wings and the heteroptera the wings are held flat over the body during the resting stage whereas in homoptera the wings are held like a tent like a tent vertically over the body and both the heteropterans and homopterans will have a piercing and sucking kind of mouth parts and the heteropterans heteropterans have a very very peculiar odoriferous or uh, scent glands or uh, bad smelling glands and usually these glands are opening at the hind coxae and uh, whereas the homopterans they have a wax glands and the heteropterans will never make any kinds of sounds as far as the homoptera they have a some kind of sound making mechanism but most importantly the cicadas they are very popular in making the sounds so these are the important characteristic features and the differences between these two suborders like heteroptera and homoptera and similarly we also try to understand the important characters and the taxonomic features of very Uh, very very important uh, families within the uh, suborder heteroptera of the order hemiptera and in that we discussed about the first one is simicidae and the simicidae is actually bed bugs and the most important uh, character we found that the coxa is rotating coxa they have then the second one is pentatomidae the pentatomidae are shield bugs and uh, the because uh, the pronotum is uh, kind of shield kind of structure that's the reason we call them as shield bugs and pentatomida the most common one is nazara virudula the green stink bug the moment you touch these green color bugs which are coming to your home in the garden so they give some kind of bad smells because you know very well the, all the heteropterans uh, will have a scent glands or odoriferous or bad smelling glands so the number of glands may vary but they always open in the hind box and the third one is ligoidea so uh, here uh, in this we try to understand how these uh, small seed bugs and generally the most important seed bug what you commonly see is uh, a cotton uh, bug and uh, here uh, the important taxonomic character is front femora is actually expanded and the third one the fourth one is miridae Uh, miridae is very commonly we see the mirid bugs and the paddy fields and also uh, the tea mosquito bug and another one is phyrocoridae red red cotton bugs it is very commonly you see these red cotton bugs everywhere and uh, the last one is uh, coridae and leaf footed bugs the hind legs especially hind leg femora is expanded looks like a uh, leaf uh, that's the reason we call them as leaf footed bugs so these are the important uh, six families uh, uh, which are coming under uh, order hemiptera and the suborder heteroptera and these six orders we try to learn because they are economically important and the first one is basically is uh, blood sucking uh, lice and blood sucking uh, uh, bed bugs actually so and the remaining uh, five orders uh, five families we try to understand because they are economically important as far as the cricket is concerned so in this class we will try to discuss about the important families under the suborder uh, homoptera under the order hemiptera so homoptera so heteroptera and uh, homoptera heteropterans are bigger in size and heteropterans antennae is bigger in size usually And the number of segments may be three to four, but the size is uh, very big. And the heteropterans will have a four-wing hemiptera. Heteropterans will have a scent glands or bad smelling or odoriferous glands. And the heteropterans will not make any sounds. So these are the important taxonomic characters. And as far as the homoptera is concerned, they usually have a 
very small they are very small in size and generally the winged forms are very very less in numbers but they have wax glands they they, and they also produce sound but most important are the cicadas and in this we will try to understand the most commonly appearing most commonly seen insects which are as far as the agriculture is concerned because we are all from agriculture sciences we need to understand the important uh, insects of various families so within the suborder homoptera uh, within the order hemiptera so this is the topic for the day and uh, and in this class we, i will also try to show you some of the important videos so that you can understand how these because in the pictures we will be usually uh, giving a large size picture but actually the insects are really very very small they are very very small they usually actually all these homopterans they stay under side of the leaf and uh, they are in a huge numbers because they are small and they have a wonderful piercing or sucking kind of mouth parts and most importantly all these insects which are coming under suborder homoptera of the order hemiptera they are all a virus transmitting insects they are also vectors of the plant diseases that's the reason it is extremely important for us to understand that's the reason i made some i i try to give some kind of uh, a video so that you can understand better so in this class as i told you that uh, we'll be uh, basically discussing about the important families so important families of the uh, suborder uh, homoptera of the order hemiptera the first one is cicadellidae the first one is cicadellidae and cicadellidae is, uh, is a leaf hopper cicadellidae is a leaf hopper and uh, we also call them as a jacets but jacets uh, name is not very popularly known in the entire world but only in india we call them a jacet but otherwise go all over the world they call it as a leaf hoppers so they are the uh, they are the smaller hopper insects which are uh, basically feeding on the leaves that's the reason we call them as a leaf hoppers they are economically extremely very very for cicadellidae is a very very important family and uh, they are also vectors of the plant diseases and another thing is they also cause injury not only by sucking the sap from the leaf surfaces not only by transmitting the viral disease but also but also so they generate some kind of toxins a toxic materials and because of which the leaves uh, will have a withering or drying or some kind of dead uh, kind of appearance so that that kind of appearance will give some kind of hopper bugs if you visit the paddy field sometimes so whenever you visit a paddy field especially in godavari district so you will be seeing the paddy fields drying in the middle of the field a circular drying in, it's all because of the uh, leaf hoppers so that we call them as a uh, uh, paddy uh, leaf hopper and uh, they usually are in a wedge shape you can see the picture here so they are usually in a wedge shape and another interesting thing is all these hoppers if you touch try to touch them they don't go straight they actually try to move sideways so diagonally so these are the important characters and you can see here um, uh, the paddy leaf hopper nepotitis varicans is very very important and mango leaf hopper is also idioscopus this is also very very important and these are extremely important the most commonly seen the most commonly seen hopper just look into the bendy leaf nearby your home or any leaf you will find a small hopper on the underside of the leaf both in nymphal stage and adult stages they are nothing but amrasca bigutula bigutula so extremely important it's commonly seen you will find everywhere whereas the mam paddy leaf hopper and mango leaf hoppers they are uh, mono uh, so they, they they actually lives only on the paddy as far as the paddy hopper is concerned mango but as uh, amrasca bigutula bigutula is very very commonly seen leaf hopper and this leaf hopper has got a wide range of hosts and uh, they are, they are also very important because they transmit the diseases and another few more important characters are and they have a small spines on the hind tibia though they are very very small but and basically we use these characters for the taxonomic kind of kid whenever you catch hold of any hopper and bring to us and the taxonomist will try to look into these taxonomic characters and another interesting character is they actually excrete a honeydew kind of structure is a sweet material from the anus and you know very well when we discussed about the sucking insects 
and the most importantly about the filter chamber you remember so when we discuss about the uh, dice to system of the sucking insects the sucking insects the sap sucking insects they have some kind of a different kind of structure called um, uh, filter chamber which actually uh, removes the excess water it will not enter into the meat gut straight away the excess water will enter into the hind gut so uh, the most important taxonomic character is they have a one or two rows of small spines on the hind tibia that's very very important and uh, they also they are wedge shape and they actually walk diagonally they don't go straight and they have a wonderful uh, piercing and sucking kind of mouth parts and also they inject toxins they inject toxins into the plant tissues there's a reason the moment these hoppers are many numbers and a plant because of the injection of the toxic materials the plant entire plant will dry up it looks like a burn as if somebody burned the paddy field as if somebody burned the leaf so that that gives some kind of burn appearance now you can see a wonderful video here so you can understand how these uh, uh, hoppers look like so this in this video you can see the small hopper that's actually a nymph uh, that's very small you can see somebody tries actually it it actually uh, it walks diagonally and it will not go straight it walks diagonally it's a very small hopper but actually this is the only one hopper in this picture but otherwise in reality there will be thousands of hoppers on the underside of the leaf the moment just go out and pick up a leaf and look for the underside of the leaf you will definitely find these hoppers very very important family cicadellidae next we will move on to delphosidae the second one is delphosidae and uh, we call them as a plant hoppers in the previous cicadellidae we call them as a leaf hoppers and as far as the insects coming under family delphosidae we call them as a plant hoppers so plant hoppers they are also economically very very important and another inter here interesting character is as far as the adults in case of previous leaf hoppers all the adults all the adults will have a wings all the adults will have a wings nymphs will not have wings they only will have a wing pads that we know very well in all the hemimetabolous insects the nymphs will not have any wings uh, any wings however they will have a wing pads but as far as the adults are concerned adults will have a fully developed wings but in this case the insects coming in our family delphosidae the plant hoppers the you can find even in the adults a kind of allergy polymorphism it means so some are winged some are wingless like if you remember when we had a discussion about the termites a tera brachyptera and tera so some are wing some are wingless and some have a wings kind of structures brachypteras so here this kind of allergy polymorphism so is it can be very easily seen in these uh, delphosids and uh, the most important and the economically important and commonly seen plant hopper is brown plant hopper of the paddy so this is the brown plant hopper of the paddy pph so that's nela parvata nuisance and uh, another important uh, very very peculiar taxonomic character is so they have a large mobile apical spur on the hind tibia so this is the you can see here also in these pictures also so they have a large mobile apical spur so whenever you bring any hoppers to any scientist or any taxonomist so they will immediately look for the spur suppose they, if they find this kind of large mobile apical spur on the hind tibia they will immediately say this is the delphosix so there may be many number of species but there are many, many number of genera but they belong to the family delphosix that is a very very important and peculiar taxonomic character you should remember and the third one is epididae this is very commonly seen and in telugu we call them as a penu banka previously in the leaf hoppers we call them as a deepakuru ante so when you whenever uh, uh, during night time especially during the crop season all these hoppers will be entering into home and they 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 they, they love to uh, actually uh, fly during night time so deepakuru la nindu kantam ante deepal devar get attract avuthi kaabatti these hoppers are very commonly seen on the leaf hoppers and also plant hoppers and uh, these the the, 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 the th third family is epididae epids Uh, epids and the memo, there is no penu banka and so penu banka. I am telling you, penu banka is a kind of insect. Penu banka is a kind of insect. 
బంక లాంటి పదార్థాన్ని రిలీజ్ చేస్తాయి సో దే లుక్ లైక్ అంటే నన్ను పేరు పేరు అంటాం కదా చిన్న పేరు లాగా ఉంటాయి ఇన్సెక్ట్స్ సో బంక లాంటి పదార్థాన్ని రిలీజ్ చేస్తాం కాబట్టి ఇన్ తెలుగు ఆల్ ద పాలిటెక్నిక్ స్టూడెంట్స్ దే ఆర్ అవేర్ సో వీ కాల్ దమ్ ఇస్ అ పేను బంక సో దీస్ ఆర్ ద ఎఫిట్స్ దీస్ ఆర్ ద ఎఫిట్స్ దే ఆర్ ఎక్స్ట్రీమ్లీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ అండ్ యూ విల్ ఫైండ్ దీస్ ఎఫిట్స్ ఎవ్రీ వేర్ సో వెన్ ఎవర్ యూ ఫైండ్ దీస్ ఎఫిట్స్ యూ విల్ ఆల్సో సీ ద యాంట్స్ యూ విల్ ఆల్సో సీ ద యాంట్స్ బికాస్ the pankaland pradhatham edaithe release chestho so sweet material which is released by the aphids so they are actually linked and eaten by the ants that's the reason so they actually coexist together so ants will not damage the aphids aphids will not touch the ants but however ants will come and lick the uh, so excretory a uh, sweet kind of material released by the aphids they are very important economically very important and uh, they, they they are polyphagous it means their host range is so big uh, they are polyphagous their uh, host range is so big and they also act, uh, act as a vectors of the plant diseases so they also act as a vectors of the plant diseases and uh, you can see here they are all pear shapes you can see here so they are all pear pear shape and the most important thing is they have a pair of cornicles on the fifth and sixth abdominal segments and remember all these things are adults but the wingless adults so the winged adults you will find very rarely you can as well identify it. but the winged adults are very rare so most of the times you will only see the wingless adults so whether the adult or the nymph so both will have a this pair of cornicles that is the very very peculiar and the most important taxonomic character you should remember that the pair of cornicles the pair of cornicles on the dorsal surface of the fifth and sixth abdominal segments so that pair of cornicles on the uh, dorsal surface of the fifth and abdominal segments so these cornicles actually very very peculiar and these cornicles produce the wax substance and these cornicles produce the wax substance and that is the characteristic feature and i will show you another picture yeah so this is another kind of epid so there are in different colors actually you will see the epids in green color epids in red color epids in orange color epids in pink color epids in black color so it depends upon the species to species and similarly it depends upon the host on which they live and uh, uh, that's what i told you the epids adults so can be can have a wings and uh, generally they are wingless most of the population are their wingless so that is the reason we call them as a alary polymorphism and they also excrete the honey dew i told you that they excrete the honey dew a sugary kind of substance through the anus and to lick and to eat that material so that material so the ants will be keep coming to the place of the aphids so that's uh, uh, that kind of arrangement uh, uh, that kind of coexistence between the ants Uh, and also the aphids uh, are, are always happening because uh, these aphids are excreting some kind of sugary kind of material and the ants will be roaming near the aphids to actually lick i have a wonderful video to you can understand better and another thing is uh, the reproduction can uh, usually it's asexual so it it, it is by parthenogenetic oviparity viviparity but sexual reproduction is very very rare so as they need to produce as many as many many numbers so that sexual reproduction is very rare usually they under, they, they they produce as many as babies and eggs as well as nymphs directly sometimes and it's all because of asexual reproduction the most important uh, taxonomic character you should remember that they have a pair of cornicles a pair of cornicles you can see here a pair of cornicles a pair of cornicles on the fifth and sixth abdominal segments and they are in pear shape they are in pear shape and uh, they have a alary polymorphism and uh, they also excrete uh, some kind of honey dew kind of solution which is a uh, sweet and that's the reason ants are coming nearer to that and they also have uh, asexual reproduction which is very very common in case of aphids i have a wonderful video and this video will show you uh, the entire life cycle of the aphids and here the uh, one is pseudococcidae pseudococcidae 
we call them as mealy bugs these are very commonly seen especially you look into the me inte dagara mandaram chettu unte chudandi aa mandaram chettina inda mealy bugs avundi so whenever you see uh, any 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 backyard plant you can see these mealy bugs on the leaves on the stems on the fruits as well so the mealy bugs because we call them as a mealy bugs because they have some kind of mealy material all over the body as some kind of uh, waxy loose waxy material all over the body that is the reason we call them as a mealy bugs they are very very small insects actually but they have been in your large numbers in thousands so the entire body you can see here the entire body is covered with mealy and some kind of filamentous waxy materials that is the important taxonomic characters and another one is all these mealy bugs will have highly developed legs and they move very very uh, very freely from one place to another place but the females are wingless the females you can see here many number of mealy bugs and again you can see the coccinellid beetle which is eating the mealy bugs it means the coccinellid beetle is, is a farmer friendly so which can eat as many as sucking pests like aphids and also mealy bugs and uh, the most you can see this mealy bugs especially on the sugar cane and even on other plants but sugar cane mealy bugs is extremely important and the farmers are losing uh, huge uh, uh, revenues because of these mealy bugs so now you can uh, you can remember two points as far as the mealy bugs pseudococcids are concerned so one is the entire body is covered with mealy or filamentous waxy materials and the second one is females are wingless and uh, all other insects all of the stages they have a highly developed legs and they move very very freely one from one place to another place yeah so here you can see uh, the life cycle of uh, citrus mealy bug citrus mealy bug and this video is very good and it can show you so the headers and also the names so these are the small mealy bugs small mealy bugs in thousands actually thousands and millions these are the small mealy bugs actually they are in uh, you can they are they are actually in the yellow color but because they have a waxy kind of material all over the body which is a white in color and they always looks like a white in color and they also have antenna they are the legs you can see the antenna the legs and the small uh, limbs of these mealy bugs they move very freely even the bigger ones and uh, they are very very active and as they have a highly developed piercing and sucking kind of mouth parts they suck the sap from the plant surfaces and they do they also release all these uh, honeydew kind of uh, secretions so all these honeydew kind of secretion and these secretions are sweet that is the reason ants also will be moving nearer to these mealy bugs so these are the smaller uh, mealy bugs and once they mold they become uh, uh, they become the adults and the adults are bigger in size and whether they is adult or new they have a uh, mealy kind of waxy uh, secretions all over the body you can see the winged one here so this is the winged one but rarely seen and uh, uh, this is entire uh, material is a mealy kind of material as a waxy can you can see here many number of eggs and they also have like uh, aphids they also have a asexual reproduction uh, and asexual reproduction so they can they can uh, directly lay, lay the eggs uh, unfertilized eggs and that becomes you can see here the small leaves which is undergoing a molding process which is undergoing molding process and uh, that becomes the bigger uh, leaf and after the four moldes it, it becomes the adults so these are uh, uh, it's, it's you don't see them actually because the entire uh, surface is covered with the uh, waxy materials and you have to just scrape the waxy material you will definitely see the smaller insects but otherwise from the outside you will only see the waxy kind of material and they are extremely important economically and they do a very very serious damage to many crops and remember uh, this is one of the most deadliest insects you can see the adults as well you can see the adults with wings that's a very rare happening actually but otherwise you will see uh, the wingless adults in most of the cases wingless adults in most of the cases and similarly as they excrete a sugary kind of materials uh, you can as well see immediately the ants which are uh, moving nearer to these mealy bugs basically uh, to lick this sweet kind of material which is excreted by these mealy bugs so we then we will go to the another important family 
is Foxidae scales actually. Uh, scales, all the scales material. Uh, uh, it looks like a scales and the common name of the insects which are uh, coming under the family Foxidae, we call them as scales. Uh, it looks like a, a, some kind of material, a waxy kind of material, a lack kind of material and uh, you never feel this is an insect. You never feel this is an insect, but actually this is a scale insect and we, I will uh, uh, see the scale insects very commonly on mostly the hardwood uh, trees, hardwood trees and branches and uh, they have a sexual dimorphism and females are very very common, uh, females are very very common and they are wingless and uh, they, they, they actually uh, they feed uh, on the sap materials and uh, so the females have a very hard, very hard and very smooth exoskeleton and uh, that is covered with wax or tough kind of scaly materials. Males are actually very, very rare. So males are very, very rare, but being, but very, very rare. And they also excrete the honeydew through the anus. And metamorphosis is very, very common. This very, very peculiar uh, family, which has got a different kind of, generally, you know, all the heavy metabolites we know very well. The eggs, nymph, and the adults eggs, ning and adults as we understand. So this is the last order we are studying as far as the hemimetabola is concerned from tomorrow onwards. So we are entering to, into the world of holometabola where egg, larva, pupa and adult stages. So this as far as the coxidae is concerned, they have a different kind of metamorphosis. The first thing start the moment, the first thing start the smaller babies and nymphs of the scale insects you know, they'll come, they, they look like a very, very small ants. So they come, they come out of the egg and they crawl here and they have wonderful, highly developed legs and they just uh, keep on crawling all over the places and look for the good food material, look for the good place where they can sit in. So, and this first install name is called crawl. So once they mould once, and once they enter into the second instar, so they are actually sessile, they are legless, they lose the legs, they will settle some place. Actually, they look for a place in the first instar, and in the second instar, they will settle for a place, and happily, they keep the piercing and sucking kind of styrates inside the plant material, enjoy the life. They don't move at all, they are sessile. And uh, that, that's how, so they, the second instar onwards, uh, once they lose, uh, once they mold to the second instar, they lose the legs and they become sessile and uh, that is the place, that, that is the instar in which actually they develop some kind of waxy material all over the body. It looks like a skin. So it looks like a skin. And as far as the males are concerned, the last instar actually, so the last, uh, last instar proceeding to adult, so is looking like a pupa. So that's what is interesting, metamorphosis is complex metamorphosis, that's what I'm telling. The first instar is actually crawler. They keep on crawling here and there and they look for a wonderful place to settle. And once they become second instar, they lose the legs and uh, they are sessile, they can't move because they, they don't have legs. But however, they develop a wonderful maxi material all over the body and they are getting protected from the sun and anyways, they happily keep on sucking the sap from the plant materials. And uh, like any other homo parents, and these insects also will have a sexual uh, reproduction and uh, they have different uh, kinds of asexual. See, remember all these small insects which are under semi, uh, 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 which are under homoptera, the suborder homoptera, all are undergoing asexual reproduction because they are small. So once they are small, they need to produce as many as babies possible. So they have a lot of space for the development, that is the reason. All these smaller insects which are coming under suborder homoptera, they actually they undergo, they actually have an asexual reproduction to produce as many as babies possible. So this is interesting. And uh, the another one is uh, Elerodidae, this extremely important family. Please remember, this is one of the most important. We call them as a white flies and black flies. Actually, uh, we can't call them as a white flies. Only the wings are in white color, whereas the body is in uh, yellow color. So the body, but however, as the wings are uh, covering the entire body and the wings are always in the white color, we call them as a white fly. Very, very common and economically very, very important. They not only cause the damage by sucking the sap from the plants, but also they are the very, very dangerous vectors of the plant diseases. 
They're very, very dangerous. So they are actually covered with a, a whitish uh, powdery wax materials all over the body. And most important, the wings here, you can see, the wings are white in color, whereas the body is actually in uh, yellow in color. You can see the nymph also here. The nymph is always light yellow in color. And similarly, the adult body is also light yellow in color, whereas the wings are white in color. That is the reason we call them as white flies. And the taxonomically important, the most important taxonomic character is they have a vesiform orifice. Orifice is a whole kind of structure. The vesiform orifice on the dorsal surface of the last abdominal segment. This is the most important taxonomic character. They have some kind of opening in the last abdominal segments, in the last abdominal segments, which actually secretes the honey tube which actually secretes the honey tube. Remember, not through the anus. They have a separate hole on the last abdominal segments. And with, uh, from that, they actually secrete that. That's a very, very important taxonomic characters as far as the white fly. And the most important is they have a waxy, white color waxy material all over the body. That is the reason we call them as white fly because the entire waxy material is in white in color. Whereas that body may be in a light in color, but the wings and every surface are uh, covered with a white kind of waxy materials. That's the reason we call them as a white, white, white flies. And uh, as I told you, the metamorphosis is just like your uh, um, scaly insects. And here also the metamorphosis is a little complex. The first instar uh, nymphs are crawlers, similar to the scales. Uh, the first instars are crawlers, and the second instar they lose the legs. They lose the legs. They are sessile. They they, they, can't, they can't move. They will only suck the keep the, keep the stylets inside the plant tissues. Keep on sucking the sap. They are busy in sucking the sap. Otherwise, they don't have any job. They don't move at all. So because they are sessile, they look like a scale kind of material, similar to the scales coccidae. So here also the first instars, they are crawlers, they keep on moving here, they will find a wonderful place. And then once they maul to the second instar, they lose the legs and they become sessile, they don't move at all. So this kind of complex uh, metamorphosis is uh, present in Elorodidae, similar to the Coxidae. The eggs are actually, uh, they have a very, very small, it's microscopic actually. So the eggs are uh, with uh, some kind of stock uh, material. And they are the vectors of the plant diseases and almost all the mosaic viruses, all the mosaic viruses, probably you are, are trying to understand what are the mosaic viruses in 171 course. And all these mosaic viruses are transmitted from one plant to one plant, one leaf to one leaf, only with the help of white flies. They are extremely dangerous. If you have one white fly, which is having a virus inside, which can actually kill the entire plant because it actually injects the virus inside the plant tissues. So we will try to understand, I have a small video, yeah, so you can see these are the white flies and uh, uh, the life cycle of the white flies, you can um, understand it. These are the white flies adults actually, they are the winged adults and they are many number, actually they are very small. Uh, adults, of course, you can see. So these are the white flies adults and you can see as well, the body and the wings are actually held over the body just like a tent. All these homopterans, across all the families of the homopterans, the wings are always held, you can see here, just like a tent during the resting stage. So they're just like a tent during the resting stage. And uh, the, yeah, this is how, yes. So you must have seen uh, it is actually sending out uh, some kind of bubbly kind of material. That is actually honeydew material, which is coming out of the uh, vesiform orifice, uh, which is in the last abdominal segment. And uh, uh, in the previous, yeah, this is, you can take uh, actually fly to some distances, very, very small insects actually. So very, very small insects. And uh, they, uh, yeah, you can see here, yeah, they're mating. And this is the egg action. So this is the egg, uh, very, very microscopic, you don't see. So these are the eggs of the white flies. These are the eggs of the white flies. And, uh, and the first instar, yeah, the first instar is uh, getting out of these eggs. And as I told you, the first instars are having a highly developed legs. They can move from one place to another place. That's the reason we call them as crawlers. Uh, whereas once they undergo the first molding, 
into the second in star then they, they, they lose the legs and they are sessile and uh, they look like a, some kind of scaly kind of materials yeah these are the crawlers actually the first in star names the first in star names are the white flies and yes so once they settle somewhere so they will settle a place somewhere yes so this is the ossiform orifice you can see here so some kind of maxi material which is coming in drop yes this is the basic basic form orifice and uh, once they uh, once they actually undergo the first molding they become sessile and they will not move they can't move at all and uh, uh, yeah so they they, they usually uh, they, they 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 usually produce the babies and the next generations by uh, asexual reproduction you can see here asexual reproduction and that is molding actually so this molding then the adults will come slowly the adult wings uh, also getting developed this is wonderful compound eyes and you can see the yes adult wings are getting developed in the last mold this is the last mold this is the final mold of the nymph and this is the adult which is coming out and adults will have a wings yes folded wings and now you can see the wings are getting unfolded uh, wings are getting unfolded yes nice yes 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 yeah so you can see the body is in yellow color the body is in yellow color whereas the wings are in white color that is the reason we call them as white flies yes so now this adult is ready to fly and ready to mate with the other sex and also produce the eggs and either sexually or asexually so yeah these are the adults these are the adults so they have a wonderful wings and you can see the four wings are uh, normal there is no modification at all unlike like hippocampus now we will uh, last, we will see the another uh, family and the last one is lophopide we call them as aeroplane bugs lophopides are aeroplane bugs so you can see that here so these bugs are very common in the sugarcane fields uh, and uh, this is called sugarcane leaf hopper and uh, the most interesting and the important characteristic feature of lophopides is head is produced like a snout you can see here the head is like a snout both in the nymph and also adults so the head is actually a, some uh, looks like a snout and the elder one is the nymph it is a big difference between the nymph and adult here so you can see the nymph nymph has got some kind of caudal kind of materials so these are the anal filaments uh, covered with the waxy material the big ones actually it is bigger than the size of the nymphs this is a very very characteristic feature of the nymph of these aeroplane bugs whereas the adult look like aeroplane they have fully developed wings and also uh, they have a snout kind of head and uh, both the nymphs and also adults they suck the sap from the plant material they are very very uh, dangerous and they cause serious damage to the sugar cane and the most important example is sugar cane leaf hopper pyrella purpusella so with this we have finished uh, the discussion as far as the important families under the suborder homoptera uh, under the order hemiptera and we try to understand all these uh, families are very very important and you should remember at least two important taxonomic characters and also the scientific names of these commonly happening insects under various families are extremely important you should remember the scientific names you should remember the taxonomic characters that's the reason i try to present you wonderful pictures and also the videos so with this we have finished uh, the discussion as far as the all the orders under uh, uh hemi metabola and we finish the discussion uh, of all the families the important families under various orders coming under uh, hemi metabola and from tomorrow onwards we will be discussing about the important uh, orders and also some of the families and some insects as far as the holo metabola is concerned so till now so all these insects will have only three stages all these insects will have only three stages egg nymph and adult so from tomorrow onwards we will be discussing about the orders which are coming under holo metabola in which you will be seeing a spectacular difference of egg larva pupa and adults with this so we will end up this discussion and uh, thank you very much and see you uh,